On a Saturday afternoon at Millette Hall, we welcome you to this presentation of Mid-American Conference Women's Basketball from the campus of Miami University, the Central Michigan Chippewas, the MAC leading Central Michigan Chippewas in Oxford this is afternoon to take on the Red Hawks for up Miami. Welcome into the broadcast booth, everybody. Patrick Eschen alongside Josiah Collins. Glad you're with us this afternoon for this one today from Millette Hall. So Josiah, the Red Hawks coming off a 92-83 win against Toledo on this floor on Wednesday. They had two home wins on the floor on Wednesday, but in that game against Toledo, the 92 points they scored was a season high. The key today against the toughest team in the conference is just to continue that offensive success. How do you do it? Uh, just keep doing the same things they were doing last time. They had a lot of really good ball movement in that last game. They got in transition very well. They got into their sets very quickly. Things just They just flowed naturally for them on the offensive side of the ball. They didn't force anything. So that's just what you want to see them continue doing today. So the Miami Challenge today, Josiah, and it's going to be number one for the Central Michigan Chippewas, Michaela Kelly, fourth in the nation in scoring, averaging 22.3 points per game on the year. 1,354 career points for her is 14th in all-time program history. Michaela Kelly can do so many things with the ball offensively and defensively. She is what this entire team is built around, so the Rocks have to stop her today if they want any type of success on the floor today. Yeah, 100%. A huge reason why Miami lost that first matchup to Central Michigan game was because of Kelly. In the fourth quarter, she was able to take over with, with along with the help from some of her teammates, which we'll talk about in a minute. But right. it's really her show. You know, she had 29 points in that game. They're going to need to focus on stopping her. It all starts with her. So you limit her production. You limit her on the offensive side of the ball. And you should be in a good position to win come the fourth quarter. Yeah, these two teams meeting back on January 11th in Mount Pleasant. Central Michigan, a six-point win in that one, 76-70 to in a game which Savannah Kleeser for Miami led the team in points with 23. We'll talk about that game a little bit more, but a special day here at Millette Hall. It's ALS Awareness Day, and sophomore Vanessa Garrell to the Miami Red Hawks, number four in white, created shooting for a cure for ALS following her father's diagnosis in 2014 and seeing how ALS affected his life and the lives of her family this year. Her family, the Geralt's family, is teaming up with Team Gleason to raise money and provide support to individuals and families living with ALS. 100% of the money raised will directly benefit those battling ALS. And today, the Red Hawks in the warm-up sporting special ALS for the Cure t-shirts. The coaches today also wearing some special ALS for the Cure pullovers on the bench as the Geralt's family will be honored here here for the end ALS game at Miami University. Central Michigan and Miami about to tip off here from Millette. We'll get our starting lineups and national anthem. Here's public address announcer Scott Schreiber. Good afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to Millette Hall for this afternoon's Mid-American Conference basketball matchup between the visiting Central Michigan Chippewas and your Miami Red Hawks. And join us as today we honor our country with the playing of our national anthem performed by the Miami Basketball Band. Davis. At 
at center for the Chippewas, wearing number 21, Jahari Smith. And at forward, number 50, Kira Bussell. And the rest of the Chippewas. The assistant coaches for CMU, Muriel Page, Courtney Shelton, and Mark Simons. And the head coach in her first season leading Central is Heather Osterley. For basketball here at Millette Hall this afternoon. Patrick Eschen and Josiah Collins back with you here on the campus of Miami University Central Michigan and the Red Hawks today. The Chippewas are in their away maroon uniforms with gold stripes down each side, gold numbers on the back, and gold Central Michigan across the front. Rocks are in their regular home white uniforms, Miami across the front in red. Red numbers on the back as well, red and black stripes down each side. As players on the bench today supporting those ALS shirts that we talked about in the opening. To support ALS and of course the Geralds family, Vanessa's dad diagnosed with ALS, the coaches as well as wearing those special white pullovers with the end ALS logo on the front. So we are set and ready to go for basketball here today as Waiting for TV to start the game. Savannah Glazer squares off at half court for the tip for the Red Hawks with Jahari Smith. And a clean win back for Savannah Glazer. The fans standing here at the Let Hall waiting Miami's first few points of the game. Off top of the key, Red Hawks with the ball offensively here to kick things off on a Saturday afternoon. Dickerson to the right edge of the paint. Glazer in the feed and off the glass and in for two. Good start there on possession number one for Miami. Definitely good ball movement, got an easy shot early. Molly Davis over the timeline for Central Michigan. She's second on the team at points per game. Just a freshman. And going to the top of the key there, knocking over Abby Hoff pretty hard. As she was shuffling around. Or excuse me, that's actually Peyton Scott, not Abby Hoff. And Scott is on all fours at the top of the key. The Miami defensive end of the floor, she might be bleeding. As shuffling to her left around the paint was Davis and then kind of body checked Scott there pretty hard and paint Scott freshman we checked out by the training staff. And 
will have to come out of the game. She was on all fours, maybe just got the wind knocked out of her. Yeah, I, don't, I hope it's nothing too serious. It didn't look anything too bad. She was able to get up and walk off. Scott third on the team, averaging 12.8 points per game on the year. And Central Michigan will inbound here with a 20 second shot clock, their offensive end of the floor. Davis top of the key, far side pass from Michaela Kelly. Right-handed dribble around the arc to the far corner. Kelly baseline drive, feeds it near side. Three launch by Davis is in and out. Rebound controlled here by Schmitz. Miami's gonna have to watch that. Davis leads the team in three-point shooting, so they're gonna need to watch out for that one. Gleisner, pass far corner, caught here by Schmitz. Into the right edge of the paint. Gleisner near away. A little jumper is good for 15 feet. By Abby Hawk, who's on the board today. Red Hawks lead a four to nothing. On the timeline, right wing Central Michigan. Here's Kelly. That's to the point. Shuffle pass far side for Waters. We get an offensive foul on Central Michigan. Must have been something there under the hoop. Ball back to the route to the 44 to go in the first. Yeah, I think that time they're going to get Kelly for an illegal screen. She didn't really get set before trying to set that play up for her teammates, so they're going to call offensive every time. Rocks here with 30 seconds to shoot. We're about 90 seconds into the first quarter. Schmitz, far side pass to the right elbow. Top of the key for Dickerson. Left-handed dribble here. We'll bounce one inside. Right edge for Kleesner. Off the glass. No good. Fought it off too hard with Davis. Davis stretches it ahead up the left wing. Smith off the glass. And it's an offensive foul. And she knocked over Esperant on the play. Great job getting in position in transition that time. First foul of the game against Jahari Smith. Rocks catching some breaks early on with the calls. Yeah, definitely. That just, that's what good defense does for you. It lets you get some easy breaks. Nickerson far side over the timeline for the Red Hawks. Right-handed dribble. Shuffles her way top of the key. Far side pass down to the right edge. Kleesner near wing. Three off with hands of Schmitz. Too hard and a little bit far right. Kelly picks up the rebound over the middle of the floor for Central Michigan. Right wing outside the arc. Kelly, free throw line, trying to feed it down low. Kleeser reaches her hands up to pick off the pass. Dickerson over the middle of the floor. Needs a near wing. Here's a three, and it's good by Kenzie Schmitz. And the Red Hawks lead it 7 0 with 7.40 to go here in the first. It's been a great start by them on the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. But this is what happened the other night against Toledo. The Rocks on a 10-0 run to start the game, and all of a sudden it was tied 10-10. It's Central Michigan. A pass out of bounds to Harry Smith, top of the key, trying to feed it near wing and miss Molly Davis. Central Michigan looks a little out of sync right yeah. now. As Gabrielle Bird will come in for Central Michigan, their first substitution of the game. Smith is out. Bird, the 6-0 senior out of South Lyon, Michigan. Suburban Detroit. Off top of the key, far side pass for Dickerson. Just fires off at three, it's too hard to bounce right. And we get a whistle here, it was tipped out on Kenzie Schmitz who came in trying to steal the rebound away for Bird. Might be playing with a lot of great energy coming out here to start. But it's gotta be consistent, it's gotta right, keep going. Right. You have to play over the full 40 minutes. Davis right-handed dribble, top of the key, pass near wing. Kyra Bustle fires off at three there and missed. Too hard and too far right. Dickerson corrals the rebound. Over the timeline, middle of the floor, left-handed dribble down the left edge. What a beautiful layup with the right arm, and it's off the glass for a pair by Dickerson. Nine, nothing, the Miami lead. Beautiful drive that time, using her size to get inside. Davis far side, outside the arc for Central. Feeds it down to the far corner. Bird pull up, left edge, yes. And it's Central Michigan on the board. First points by Bird today. Dickerson right arm dribble over the timeline on the far wing. Passes it off for Hoff. And she got a little shot to go from the free throw line. That's a shot you're looking for every trip. A little mid-range there, 11-2 Miami the lead. 6.07 to go in the first. Right side drive by Davis. Kind of pulled up for a little right arm shot. Dickerson will stretch this one all the way under the Central Michigan hoop for beyond the timeline. Caught by Esperan, but she coughed it up. Kelly back the other way. Shovels it near corner. Davis fakes the three. Now fires it off. It's too far right. Rebound collected by Kleesner as Davis waited there for Kenzie Schmitz. 
the defender to jump past her before firing the ball. That's how she got her off her spot, so that was a great defensive play there by Schmidt. Dickerson right arm dribble. To the far side, little floater and Kleesner catches the pass wide open to the back logo and off the glass and in for two. Redhawks with a great start, lead up by a score of 13 to two over Central Michigan. The Chippewas will have to use their first time out of the game with 5.32 to go here in the first and we will take one as well. Redhawks out to a great start against Central Michigan. This is Miami Basketball on Redhawk Radio. to the Miami lead with 5.32 to go here in the first. Patrick Escher, Josiah Collins back with you on Red Hawk Radio. What a start it's been for Miami, Josiah. Yeah, it's been a, an incredible start. A lot of energy on both sides of the ball, which has really like, allowed them to get to this point. So, But what we saw against Toledo was they were able to keep that up for the full 40 minutes. We have, to, we have yet to see if they can do that with Central Michigan. I'm sure that it's not going to stay this way for long. So Miami has to keep playing with that same type of intensity. Yep. So over the line on the right wing, Davis, Central Michigan offensive end of the floor here out of the timeout, the timeout they called. They had a right oh, wing three whistle. here and a lead foul called. Gabrielle Bird was contacted and she might have three free throws here. That was a late whistle that time by the ref. It did come when the ball was pretty much at the top of its arc after she thought she shot the three point shot. So Bird with three free throws at the line makes the first one. Off the bench today, an 85% free throw shooter on the year. He's come off the bench in every game this season for Central Michigan, their top scorer. Off the bench, makes the second free throw. Five points in her last game against NIU is Gabrielle Bird. Central coming off a 66-60 win against the Huskies on Wednesday at home. And Bird goes three for three at the line. So it's a 13-5 Miami lead. Dickerson, pass down low, tipped away there by Bird. And we get a whistle here as tie up at the free throw line. Dickerson was trying to pass down low from the top of the key. It was actually Davis who got the initial tip. Yeah, that time, just tried to force it over the top. Should have just kind of pulled it out, let the play reset, but just tried to force it in that side. 
So Central Michigan holds the possession arrow there and they will get it back. Davis over the timeline, middle of the floor. Top of the key for Kelly. Feeds it far away for Michaela Kelly. And we get a whistle here. The ball is passed to the far corner. Copped up, out of bounds off Central Michigan. Kyra Bustle down there. Lost it for the Chippewas. Good defense by the Red Hawks. Well inbound far side of the baseline in their own end. Paulson for Dickerson. Right handed dribble over the timeline, middle of the floor. Shuffles across the arc left wing, top of the key. Kleiser dribbles right arm, two under the hoop and lost it there as Paulson had it stripped away by Michaela Kelly who's down the right edge of the paint all the way down and Michaela Kelly, good athletic move there on Dickerson off the glass and good with the right arm. It's gonna be very hard to stop somebody like that in the open court. Five, six juniors, Michaela Kelly, but her athleticism is on a whole nother level. As Kleisner here will fire off the free throw, miss from the left elbow, they tie up for it under the hoop and a foul here will be called, I believe on the Red Hawks, as Schmitz was battling with Bird for the rebound and Schmitz will be whistled for the Red Hawks, 13th foul of the half. Scott going check back Sorry. in. Yeah, Scott heads to the scores table after that whistle. Kayla Kelly, quarterback in the offense right now for the 17 and four Chippewas. Top of the key, Davis. And she took an extra step in on Dickerson for an offensive foul. It's an easy call there. Molly Davis will grab her first personal. Yep. Offense has to get it together a little bit. Defense is still is holding up right now, but offense needs to get more in the rhythm now. 13-7 Miami lead with four minutes to go here in the first. Dickerson left arm dribble outside the arc in the near wing. Far side here is Scott, top of the key, shuffled her way around the arc to the right wing. For Esperin, dribbles left arm far side. Back for Dickerson, top of the key, one bounce left elbow. Kleesner immediately. Met by the defender there, Gabrielle Burr got her hands in to force a jump ball whistle. Yeah, with your back to you have to make sure you, you keep your eyes watching everything. That time the defender was able to come from the back side and get a tie up. Possession here favoring Miami, so they'll get it back here with 3.47 to go. The first 11 to shoot, Kleesner near wing. Top of the key for Scott, two-hand bullet down low for Kleesner, is completely upended, and another jump ball whistled here. As another tie-up, that time was started by Maddie Waters under the hoop, and Kleesner was body checked to the floor. Central Michigan will use the possession arrow now. Kleesner, she's the tallest player on the court right now, so she has to keep the ball high whenever she catches the low in that situation. She was trying to go over the layup that time, just keep it high, then you can shoot the layup from there. Kayla Kelly, far side, right arm dribble, here's Bustle to the near wing, kind of through the arc was McKenna Kelly. Maddie Waters, a little handoff on the far side of Michaela Kelly, they knocked over Esperan, it's yet another offensive foul against Central Michigan. Chippewas whistled for at least three offensive violations so far today. Yeah, the screens that they're trying to set, they're just not getting in the right position right now. So they'll bring Amani Freeman into the game for the first time, Miami will. Only 3.25 to go here in the first quarter. It will be Abby Hoff for Miami, one bounce to Dickerson, right hand arm dribble over the timeline far away. Pass to the far side, Peyton Scott, shuffles around the arc to the top of the key. We'll fling this one to the near side for Esperant. Esperant right handed dribble. It's just kind of pivoting as the defense comes from Bird outside the arc. Bird, the strip up for Michaela Kelly, has trouble handling the ball down at the offensive end. Central sets up to the near corner. Three pointer, too hard by Bird. Rebound on the far end is caught here, controlled by Jahari Smith back in for Central. Waters holds the ball, pass to the far corner. Michaela Kelly, baseline drive, flings it to the near side. Three pointer, McKenna Kelly, too far left, missed the iron completely, but another offensive rebound for Central Michigan. McKenna Kelly far away, two to shoot. Here's a long jumper, missed off the backboard high by Jahari Smith. Last second fling there, panicking with a shot clock. Yeah, I'll say these shots that Central Michigan is getting on offense, they do not look comfortable shooting the ball right now. I'm surprised to see the shot clock that low because I thought one of the shots hit the rim, but it just must not have, so the shot clock never reset. That's why they had to work it around with two offensive rebounds on that possession. Yeah, hit the side of the backboard that time. Scott, top of the key, Hoff launches a three, way short, and coming in for the rebound, middle of the lane with Scott. 
Far away here is Hoff. One pass down low to the far side. It's played here by Dickerson. Long three pointer. Missed it right from the right wing and it goes out of bounds along the baseline here. And Miami will bring Kenzie Schmitz back into the game before Central Michigan inbounds with 2.13 left in the first. Central Michigan, they put in their zone now on defense. It's giving Miami a little bit of trouble. They're not getting the same driving lanes that they were getting before when they were on that nice run. Davis right on dribble over the middle of the floor. Pass to the near wing for Kelly. Will come back. Michaela Kelly fired off at three. Missed and went in and out. Offensive rebound to Jahari Smith. Finishes off the glass and in. 13-9 the Miami lead. Dickerson over the middle of the floor. Around the arc on the far side. Feeds it back. Here's a jumper from the free throw line. Missed there by Abby Hoff. Comes down to the far corner. Controlled here by Maddie Waters. Waters over the timeline, middle of the floor, right edge of the paint, a shot up, and it was blocked away out of midair. Good job that time by Amani Freeman with a great defensive play, and it might get Miami some momentum here with one and a half left in the first. Yeah, their defense has been consistent throughout this whole quarter. That's how they've kept their lead, really, but Central Michigan, they're trying to get more into a rhythm. Miami's just giving them a hard time doing it. Rock scoreless in the last two minutes, five seconds, five a run for the Chippewas in that time. Near wing Davis to the free throw line for Smith. Top of the key. Davis again with 10 to shoot. 117 to go in the first quarter. Back outside the arc, far away. Kelly. Right arm dribble tripped up. Foul whistle there as she was making her way down the left edge of the paint. Kayla Kelly a little bit shaken up too on the floor around the left elbow. And she might have to come out. But appears to walk it off. Had to be helped to her feet by a couple teammates. So an inbound coming here for Central Michigan offensive end of the floor. They have 20 to shoot, far side of the baseline with a 112 left in the first. Maddie Waters will toss it in for the Chippewas. Long pass, top of the key. Here's Jahari Smith. Far wing for Davis, reaches left edge, spin around, move to the near wing, Waters, long three, got it to go. That is the university president wanting for a travel call. Sitting over the timeline, middle of the floor. 13-12, it's a one point game now, Rodex with a one point lead. Miami has not scored since that timeout has happened. Far side, Esperant Kleesner with a jumper far end. About 15 feet out, gets it to go, 15-12. Central works it back up. Davis to the right wing. Control here by Kelly. Far side. Three in and out off the hands of Waters. And Waters with the offensive rebound, although the, the basket won't count. They got it to the right edge of the post. Jahari Smith went off the glass. And it went in, but she knocked over, I think, Peyton Scott. And that was an offensive foul against Central Michigan with 29.2 left here in the first. Yeah, when your offense doesn't work and your defense is the thing that's going to save you. And it's done that for Miami in this quarter. Three point Miami lead, the shot clock is off as Dickerson here over the timeline, middle of the floor. 18 seconds left in the first. As Davis reaching her left arm out at Dickerson who's at half court. Dickerson outside the arc near wing, top of the key pass, Hoff flings it down to the near corner, Esperant three pointer too hard. Scott reaches for the rebound and grabs it right edge of the post. Two seconds left, she couldn't get a shot up there. Central Michigan with some arms in the way. And it goes out of bounds with exactly one second left off the chips. So that's brand will inbound here. It's going to have to be a touch and shoot. That's brand near corner. Hoff with a shot off inside. It's good for a three pointer. Abby Hoff will give Miami an 18 12 lead after 10 minutes of play. It's the first quarter over here, and what an end to that quarter. What a start to the quarter. Red Hawks playing pretty well after 10 minutes, Josiah. Yeah, that start to the quarter was great. It got them out to that early lead, but then when things just started falling apart on the offensive side of the ball, their defense really kept them in this game. It kept their lead for them. Central Michigan really only able to put up 12 points this quarter, so their defense is definitely the story of this first quarter. 18-12, the Miami lead here after the first. We're back with a second in a moment. It's Miami basketball on Red Hawk Radio.
As we get a second quarter here from Let All, Patrick Esch and Josiah Collins back of the year on Red Hot Radio tonight. And one of the things we'll be watching for the rest of the year, Josiah, Lauren Dickerson right now at 2,041 career points for the Red Hawks. She's number two on the all-time list, number one, Courtney Osborne, 2,166 points. 125-point difference, it's only a matter of time, I think, before Dickerson reaches the number one ranking in the career points list. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Seven games left in the regular season. I think she'll probably do it by the end of the season for sure. Rocks lead by six, and they have the ball offensively out of the timeout. Dickerson right elbow, cuts across the paint, little left-handed layup, that time was missed short. As Bird will hand off to Davis over the line on the right wing. Davis hand off, near wing of the yard. Kelly, top of the key for Michaela Kelly. McKenna Kelly, Michaela Kelly book up there. And Michaela, top of the key, will fire off a shot that missed. A little three-pointer. McKenna, the offensive rebound will feed right away for a three. That's good by Molly Davis. That's dangerous right there. Once the shooter sees one go in, they'll start to get in a rhythm. 9-10 to go here in the second. Nickerson, top of the key for Esperan. Hands it back for Abby Hoff, also at the point, far wing. Dickerson inside of the far corner. Here's Kleesner. Flings it cross court to the near side. Esperant baseline drive left wing. We'll get an N1. A blocking foul whistled here. She got the shot to go. And down on the floor holding her head is Kyra Bustle. She was the one that committed the blocking foul, and she is down on the floor right now under the hoop. That's a great drive by Esperant after getting the defender by him on the pump fake. Yeah. So. Sitting on the floor right here is Bustle. And it will get up. On her own power, no medical staff needed. They'll just have to wipe off the floor under the hoop. So Monique Gesperin will shoot a free throw here to try to complete the three point play for the Red Hawks. First one is too hard right. Central Michigan with a rebound. They're coming back the other way. Davis got the handoff here on the far wing. Top of the key, she'll have it. Drive on the right edge of the paint. Come back outside the arc and a feet to the far side. McKay for Kelly. Right handed dribble. Also at the point. Down the middle of the lane, got a wide open drive and off the glass net for two. Yeah, somebody's going to rotate over and be in the middle to help out on defense there. Too easy that time. Dickerson, top of the key for Scott. Left-handed dribble. Feeds it far away for Esperan. Pleased her left elbow. Right-handed dribble, far side, here's Hoff. Dickerson, shovel pass near corner. Esperan steps in the arc and back out. Up top for Dickerson with eight to shoot. Dickerson, right edge of the paint. Little floater shot up, no good. It was short and right. Central the rebound, they're back the other way as Davis over the timeline, middle of the floor. Left-handed dribble, far side, feeds it to Kelly, top of the key, three-pointer bustle, missed too far left, it gets tipped out to the far side, S. Brand, the catch here for the Red Hawks. On the line on the near wing, Dickerson, feeds it top of the key, off. And I don't know if that was a pass or a shot, but it went out of bounds of the baseline, way left of the hoop. Looks like she got caught in the middle there. She saw she saw Kleiser there late trying to make the pass, so it ended up being a pass shot kind of thing. Davis, you're on the timeline, middle of the floor, dribbles with the right arm. Feeds it near wing for Gabrielle Bird. With seven and a half to go here in the second. Far side for Davis. It is Bustle here, shoveling it near corner for a three. It took one bounce off the rim straight up in the air and dropped through. Gabrielle Bird with a three pointer. That time for Central Michigan. She has eight points on the day. We're tied at 20. Office is going to have to get something going here. Hoff, near wing for Scott. Dribbles the right arm. Going through the arc. And maybe took an extra step there. They won't call it. Left edge of the paint. Nice play there. Hawk works your way down and fires it off the glass and in with a left arc. Davis over the timeline here in the near wing. Plays it down low. Wide open bird. Has trouble under the hoop. Pleaser came in just in time to block the shot away. Scott over the timeline, middle of the floor. Left arm dribble. Feeds it to the near side. It goes out of bounds off Pleaser who couldn't catch the pass on the left edge there. And with 6.39 to go in the second, it's back to the chips. Yeah, missed opportunity. You don't want to have too many of those against a team like this. These are would have probably had a layup that time. She had a wide open lane to the hoop. 
So here's Davis, top of the key dribble for Central Michigan. Feeds in near wing for Gabrielle Bird. Near side, Kelly. Will go off for Bird, right wing. Three is good. And Gabrielle Bird will give Central Michigan their first lead of the day at 23 22. Central Michigan, their shooters are really starting to come alive now. Miami's going to really have to watch the three point line from here on out. Anderson over the middle of the floor. Shuffles her way to the far side, top of the key. Off near wing, Scott, three pointer, yes. And a freshman guard at Lynchburg, Ohio makes it a 25 23 Miami lead. Good ability to respond. Scott on the board today. Davis far corner, Central Michigan feeds it left edge. Jahari Smith cuts her way across the paint, fires it off the rim, no good. Cleans her the hand off to Dickerson, who dribbles right arm over the timeline of the near wing. Dickerson shuffles her way across the arc, hands off here for Scott. Top of the key for Esperant, down low, Scott tipped it away. Far corner. Scott to the left elbow. Here's Kleesner, the jumper, gets it to go. 27-23, the Miami lead with 5.16 to go in the second. Offense starting to do a lot better with their motion. Kayla Kelly, right side drive, trying to pass it near corner. Got tipped out of bounds off a run on Cannon, out the near baseline. She was looking there for McKenna Kelly. There's no relation between McKenna and Michaela. Also coming in for Miami, number 24. As McKenna here will inbound baseline on the near wing. So Vanessa Geralt will make her first appearance of the game. She'll take out Lauren Dickerson, who will exit for the first time tonight. And Abby Hoff is also on the bench for Miami. They brought in Bree Paulson. Inbound near side of the baseline, Central Michigan. Offensive end of the floor. They find Davis outside the arc in the right wing. With 5.06 to go here in the second. Davis right side, drive, fires it up, but it's no good, another offensive foul. As the ball went through, but that's Brand knocked over there in the drive by Davis. It'll be her second personal, and yet another offensive foul against Central Michigan. The bench can't believe it. Yeah, Davis couldn't believe it either. She was telling herself, come on, man, but Deep is just getting a good position right now, setting themselves up for success. Harold's far side for S. Brand, left-handed dribble. Pass top of the key for Bree Paulson. Near wing for Scott. Pleaser, left edge, fires it out. S. Brand, lock three, right corner, no good. And it's picked up here by the Chippewas near the hoop. We had a foul whistle on Miami. As Jahari Smith caught the rebound, it went out of bounds. I think Paulson will pick up a foul here. And we will have a timeout here with 4.44 left in the second. 27-23, the Miami lead. It'll be close all game long. Miami basketball on Red Hawk Radio.
444 to go here in the second. 27-23 lead for the Miami Redhawks and Josiah. It was one point, a 12-3 lead for Miami in this game. They need to find that ability to respond, obviously, going on big runs and then Central able to claw it back in. Yeah, we knew Central was gonna come right back into this game. We knew that Miami probably wasn't gonna run away with this one with this being one of the top teams in the max. So their ability to respond and stay composed on the offensive side of the ball when that run did come is showing a lot of promise. Central with the ball offensive end of the floor after the timeout. McKenna Kelly, right edge of the paint, and they floated across for an and one. His left edge it was Jahari Smith, who caught it for Central and fired it off the glass for a pair. Lauren Dickerson, second. And Lauren Dickerson will get her second of the game on that play for the and one. Jahari Smith, 65%. Free throw shooter at the line here, missed the free throw too hard. Rucks corral the rebound over the timeline far away. Dickerson, left hand, dribbles, holds it above her head on the far side outside the arc. That's Brant for Dickerson, left-handed dribble. Shuffles her way around the arc to the left wing. Pass for the point, off. Near corner, Scott, for Kleesner in the paint, and Kleesner tripped up as it was getting stripped away, and they whistled a foul on it. Bodies are hitting the floor in this game, left and right. Half the game's being played on the floor. <laughs> Chippewas with their third team foul of the quarter. We'll send Dickerson here to the near side of the baseline for an inbound. As they got Karasinki for her first personal. And the Dickerson inbound was tipped off the hand of Jahari Smith out of bounds. So Miami will inbound now on the near wing. 19 to shoot. Dickerson floater inside. Left edge Kleesner. Fires a pass far away. Hoff three pointer. Missed too hard. Kind of a line drive shot there. And McKenna Kelly will get to Michaela Kelly. Fast break over the timeline right away. Kind of pulled on the brakes. Right elbow, walks it back outside the arc. Michaela to the far corner. Caught here by McKenna Kelly. Into the paint, working here's oh, Jahari oh. Smith. Fired up an elbow on Kleiser, trying to make her way to the iron. And another offensive foul against Central Michigan with 3.49 to go in the second. Yeah, Miami, they've done a great job being in the right place at the right time on defense. That time it was just an obvious play, the elbow going right into her chest. So, great job by Miami on defense. Inbound here, Abby Hoff to the hands of Lauren Dickerson over the timeline of the far wing for the Redhawks. Far side pass for Anika Spring. Holds it above her head. Top of the key, here's Dickerson. Hands off for Abby Hoff. Far wing, S. Brent reaches her way to the right edge of the paint, tosses it up in the air. Dickerson for Hoff. Far side, Kleesner, a jumper is good for two. About 15 feet away, Miami Green takes a four point lead. Kleesner's been able to get whatever she's wanted this entire game. Miami's going to want to keep going to that option. Kayla Kelly, far side for McKenna, right wing drive, kicks it back out, top of the key. Here's Bird. Handed it back for Kelly. Now on the far wing, Michaela Kelly. Miss McKenna had it first. Kayla makes her way to the left elbow, then back out far corner, a three-pointer, oh, wow. hung for a second, took a weird bounce, Bustle got it to go. As that ball kind of hit the glass, was stuck on the iron, and then dropped through, 29-28 the Miami lead. Dickerson at the point, far side, Esperant outside the arc. Now Kleesner, kind of a line drive shot, hit the net from the far side. It was oh. a jumper. Oh. And we have contact as players move back up floor. Central Michigan's Gabrielle Bird went down. This game's getting very physical here. Kleesner yeah. got tangled up there with 33 for Central Michigan. I'm not sure who that is. That's Gabrielle Bird for the Chippewas at a South Fly in Michigan. And Central here will inbound from the near wing and take it over the timeline. 2.40 left here in the second. Miami with a one point 29-28 lead. Michaela Kelly, near wing for Gabrielle Burr. Near corner, controlled by McKenna Kelly. Right edge of the paint, floats it up top. Here's Sofia Karasinski. Right wing, Michaela Kelly outside the arc, shuffling her way over, top of the key. Shot off at three, got it to go. 31 29, the lead for Central. Dickerson over the line on the left wing. Top of the key, shuffles her way to the right, spin around, move right elbow. Little flip back for Scott, outside the arc, baseline drive, right wing. And we get a shot off with the right arm and a foul drawn there. Gabriel Bird is her first. The fifth. 
And Ovi Burns first personal foul against Central Michigan with that contact. As Brandon will be taken out, coming in is Kenzie Schmitz for the Red Hawks, who started the game today and has started the last seven for Miami. Two shots on the way for Scott, 81% free throw shooter on the year. The first one is good. Freshman of Lynchburg, Ohio, has had 20 or more points in two of her past three. Scott with four on the day today. And make it five with a second free throw make. We're tied at 31 with two minutes left in the second. Last two minutes here at the half are gonna be very important for Miami. Kayla Kelly, right-handed dribble, right edge of the paint, little drive, floated off the glass, no good, rimmed around. Back for Scott, over the timeline, middle of the floor. Scott, right elbow, coming through, got a chop there off the hands of Kelly. Michaela Kelly, that time with a swat with the right arm, as Scott trying to flip it up for the layup. And it will be Michaela Kelly's second personal foul. Strong drive that time by Scott, drew some contact, going to the line. And Scott will go right back to the charity strike after going two for two on her last trip. And her first one makes it for Peyton Scott. And now has six points on the day. 12.8 points per game on the year for Peyton Scott. The freshman makes the second. 33-31, the Miami lead. Molly Davis over the timeline right away. Oh. Top of the key, makes your way to the free throw line. Far side pass. Fans wanted a travel call there. That's how she definitely got away with a carry. Karasinki for Davis. Floats in near wing, outside the arc for Bird. Into the free throw line. Now it's Davis, shuffled to her left to fire off a three. Missed, offensive rebound, Karasinki. Who put it up in a foul draw in here. The shot was no good, and they're gonna pick up Kleesner for her second personal. The, the foul would have been, well, the, the defense would have been clean that time, but she came down with a swat on the ball trying to get a block. That was what drew the foul. So two shots here are at the line for Sofia Karasinski, and she'll make the first one. That's her first free throw make of the year. At two minutes, just zero points against Northern Illinois in their last game. Redshirted last year because of an injury. And Karasinski makes the second one to have two points on the day. Dickerson over the timeline, middle of the floor, 113 to go here in the second. Left-handed dribble for her, top of the key. Hands it back for Hoff, a little give and go. Dickerson right edge of the paint, and we got a jump ball here. It was tied up for just a second. As Karasinski got her hands right in there, and the possession hero favoring Central Michigan, Deanna Hendricks wanted it to be a foul, not a tie-up. Yeah, that time the defender did, get a, did do a good job of getting their hands on the ball that time, so that's why they're gonna let it, let it be a jump ball instead of a foul. As now the referees are confirming at the scores table who gets the ball after this play, and the possession hero favors Central Michigan. So they confirm that, and the Red Hawks will have the next one if there is another tie-up in the half. One minute left here in the second. Davis, top of the key. Needs a far side for Bird, left wing outside the arc. Over to McKenna Kelly, floated it to the middle. Picked off here by Schmitz, up ahead for Hoff, off the glass, no good. She had a little breakaway that time, a layup opportunity, but fired it off too hard. Yeah, tried to avoid the defender instead of going into the contact. Molly Davis feeds it down to the near side, and it's tipped out of bounds and around the baseline. 37.8 seconds left here in the second. Central will get it back with 21 to shoot. McKenna Kelly to inbound here for the Gips. Floats it up top of the key. Dickerson messing there with Davis. Dickerson gets it back. Reaches the right elbow. Spins it back for Hoff, who regains control outside the arc near wing. Dickerson top of the key. Wide open three. Scott in and out. Too far right that time. The shot clock off in Central Michigan. Will likely go for the last shot here as Davis trots over the line with 15 seconds left in the first half. Important not to give up an easy basket right before the half here. Davis dribbling between both arms at half court. Dickerson the defender, five seconds to go. Davis near wing, outside the arc, dribbles to the left hand and Mack look with a paint, a little float shot up. It's an air ball, too far left and short. 
And that will end the festivities here after 20 minutes down the light hall. We're tied at 33 between Miami and Central Michigan. This would be an incredible win for the Red Hawks if they were able to pull it off Josiah, but the key is to just keep it close in that second half. The Red Hawks did it all that entire first half. What do you want to see them keep doing in the next 20 minutes after halftime? I want to see their offense be a lot more comfortable in the second half. We saw in the second quarter and then as the first quarter carried on, their offense kind of got out of sync and out of rhythm. It was a lot harder for them to get shots than they wanted. They were able to do it on a few possessions. Now just in the second half, do it on a more consistent basis. On defense, you're doing fine. You're, you're in position, you're holding them to shots that they don't really want to take. If they make a bad shot, then they make a bad shot. But on defense, keep that same intensity all the way through the second half. For Central Michigan, a team playing on the road, a 10-game win streak maybe a bit in jeopardy for them here as we're tied at the half. What do you want them to do so far in the next 20 minutes? I mean, they've been very frustrated on offense. They've been able, they've shown that for multiple times, especially with the offensive fouls. So if they want to win this game, they're going to have to be a lot more composed in the second half and not letting those emotions go too high, too low. All right, Gabrielle Bird, leading scorer for Central. From Michigan, she has 11. Savannah Kleiser is the leading scorer for the Red Hawks. She has 12 as we're at the half here from Lett Hall in Oxford. About a 12 minute break or so. We'll be back with you for the second half of action. Again, tied at 33 between Miami and Central Michigan. It's Miami basketball on Red Hawk Radio.
Back here in the lead hole at Oxford, we're tied at 33, going into the third quarter here at 33-33 game between Miami and Central Michigan. Red Hawks on a three-game winning streak. Chippewas on a 10-game winning streak of their own on top of the MAC. And the Red Hawks trying to upset the Chippewas on their home floor this afternoon. Patrick Escher, Josiah Collins back with you on Red Hawk Radio today as Cleasner on the right wing trying to float it up and no good off the glass from the right edge of the post. Rocks the offensive rebound, kick it out to the right wing, and Abby Hoff will get a three-pointer, and Miami off to another good start in this second half. Talked about their need to play consistently. Can they keep it up? Yeah, I definitely think that on the offensive side, if they can keep getting shots like that or just lose balls, diving for it, then they'll, the shots are definitely going to come for them. After Michigan works it down low for the right wing. Kyra Bustle off the glass and in for the right edge of the post. Dickerson top of the key, fires it near wing for Hoff. Long three-pointer is good. Two straight three-pointers for Abby Hoff. She keeps getting open looks, she keeps taking them. Yeah. Why not? Actually, they say it's a two-pointer for Hoff. She was right on the line. 38-35 the lead for Miami. Far wing, Michaela Kelly to the free throw line. They work it into the near side for Smith. Near corner, Waters, long three, over the hoop. And back the other way comes Dickerson on the timeline, left wing for the Red Hawks. Shovel pass far corner, get tipped out of bounds. In front of Hoff, as it was Michaela Kelly that time getting her hand in there. Hoff and Cleasner have done a great job here playing, getting some offense for going for Miami when Dickerson and Piscata both struggled a bit in this game. Right. Dickerson top of the key. Kicks it out to the near wing for Scott. Dribbles the left arm outside the arc. We get a whistle here for a foul. And we say Jahari Smith will commit the foul. So Dickerson will inbound near side of the baseline for the Red Hawks in a 38-35 lead. Near corner, Kleesner walks her way down low, flings it up on a baseline drive from the near wing. He got upended for a foul against Central Michigan again. That was a nice fake that time. Fake like she was going to give it to Dickerson, drove right to the layup. Two team fouls for Central Michigan, none for Miami so far. Here in this third quarter. Quick pickups. They, if they're not careful, they could be in the bonus before they know it. Right. Kleesner, the free throw is good. As she makes the first of two, 70% free throw shooter on the year. 40 blocks for Kleesner is a career high for her and also leads to that this season. Missed the second free throw. Shows the commitment to the defensive end. Three pointer right wing is good for Michaela Kelly. To make it a one point game again at 39 38. Definitely got to watch out for her and Davis as well. Those two definitely had a crucial role in that last time these two teams matched up. Dickerson top of the key for Hoff, far side Dickerson, three-pointer left wing, gets it to go. Actually they say a two-pointer, she was on the line on the far side, 41-38. Central works it up far corner of the offensive end. Waters pass near corner for McKenna Kelly, up top for a three-pointer, it's good by Gabrielle Byrne. Byrne has been huge off, the, huge off the bench for Central Michigan, really kept them in the game when they couldn't get anything going. Rocks worth the ball far corner, offensive end, Kleesner, baseline drive far away. We get a whistle for an and a one. She got a hand up high on Maddie Waters. Kleesner able to draw the foul, but Waters a little shaken up after the play. There's a lot of contact coming in there. Yeah. Mentioned the three point shooting of Central Michigan been a big factor of success today. They're eight for 19 from outside the arc, 42.1%. Yeah, that's definitely been the crucial thing, keeping them in this game. These are at the free throw line. The first one's good. They're the only one's good, I should say, for three-point play to complete it. 44-41. Molly Davis, right elbow. Dishes in near wing for McKenna Kelly. Left edge of the paint, top of the key. Here's Bird. Floats it down low here for Bustle. Gives it back to the free throw line, Kelly. Near wing for McKenna Kelly. That was McKenna Kelly. Now far away in a... Jumper there for 10 feet out by Bustle is good. Trading baskets right now. One team is going to have to figure out a way to stop the other on defense. A lot of offense so far in the second. 
Schmitz, right elbow Queezer, the dribble down the right edge. Kicks it up, but it's no good. Deanna Hendricks has her hands in the air by the bench. She wanted a foul. Dickerson got a feed from Queezer after an offensive rebound. Down the middle of the lane for a wide open layup. Two more for the Red Hawks, who lead by three. Great hustle created another opportunity on offense. Molly Davis left in a dribble. Hands back for Michaela Kelly. Shuffles her way across the arc. Top of the key, three miss. Rebound right to Kleesner. Who kicks it to the middle for Lauren Dickerson. On the timeline right away. Shovel pass to the near side for Scott. Works her way to your corner. A little jumper miss from 12 feet out. I like that look though. Even though it didn't fall that time, a nice short corner look. That could definitely get a shooter like her going. Central back the other way. Molly Davis will float it up and in from about 10 feet away, just kind of a right-handed shot that time that dropped through. Dickerson top of the key for the Red Hawks, shuffles her way across the arc, fired off a three-pointer that missed too far right. And back the other way comes Central Michigan. Here's Kelly, over the line. Back to the left edge of the paint, dish forward for Byrne. Dribbles to the back, logo tipped away there by Kleiser. Floater pass Great up hustle. ahead. Here's Hoff down the right away. Two on one with Dickerson. A pass over to Dickerson, left side, but she floated over the iron on a wide open look. Those are plays you have to convert. You get a turnover on this team. That's something you got to do. Dickerson steal away from Davis, left wing. She's down the floor. Dickerson, left handed shot for the end one. It gets it to go. Chance for a three-point play by Lauren Dickerson. It's been a pretty quiet game in terms of her offensive production this year. Eight points now on the night. And she had a nice steal and took it back the other way for two. Yeah, always a threat to get it going to at any point in time. And we may have a timeout here called by Central Michigan. I think we do. Or Miami, rather. Red Hawks will use their first of the game before the Dickerson free throw. It will stop the clock with 5.29 to go here in the third quarter. 48-45, the Miami lead for Oxford. This is Miami basketball on Red Hawk Radio.
529 to go here in the third, 48-45. It's the Miami lead over Central Michigan. Savannah Kleiser may be the player of the game today, Josiah. Great hustle under the hoop and a good job, and maybe that's why Miami's up in this game so far as her. I think so, 100%. It's not only her offense that's getting it done, but the defense is creating opportunities for her teammates. Her passing has been on point, rebounding on point. Everything has been going for her. As Lauren Dickerson here, the chance to complete the three-point play, but she missed the free throw. Comes down to Central Michigan here, Molly Davis over the timeline, middle of the floor from the Chippewas, pass to the near side as Michaela Kelly works her way across the arc. Far side for Karasinski and gets it to go for a three-pointer by Sophia Karasinski. And now it's five points of the day. Dickerson left-handed dribble, top of the key, Paulson. Feeds it far away for Dickerson. Right-handed dribble across the arc. Still on the left wing outside. Pass to the near side for S. Brand. Back for Dickerson. Left elbow, Kleesner. Right-handed dribble, trying to cut her way across the arc. We get a foul whistle here with seven to shoot. Yeah, that's a mismatch right there for Central Michigan. You do not want Kelly on Kleesner that time. Kleesner's going to win that matchup almost every time. And we got another timeout here in the third quarter with 4.49 left. We're tied at 48. Miami and Central Michigan. Miami basketball on Red Hawk Radio. Tied at 48 between Miami and Central Michigan. 4.49 left here in the third. Patrick Etcher, Josiah Collins back with you here from Michaela Kelly, the leading scorer for Central Michigan this season. Josiah, it's been a bit of a struggle, 10 points so far, but we really don't think she's playing at the top of her game in this one tonight. Yeah, and that's all because of Miami's defense on her. They've been making it very difficult for her to get any looks off. Savannah Kleiser, two free throws at the line. Out of the timeout will make the first one. She leads the team with 14.3 points per game on the year. Double figures in six straight for Kleesner. Sinks the second one, and she has 17 on the night. So make it double figures in seven straight for number 32. 50-48 to Miami Lake Central. Michigan, a little three-pointer is good. Off the hands there of Michaela Kelly. Maybe she's not struggling anymore. Yeah, she's definitely started to find her rhythm here in the third quarter. She's getting a lot of good looks from three. 
Jefferson, far wing. In the corner, Esperanza, travel whistle here. She was trying to come out from the far side. 424 to go here in the third, a 51-50 Central Michigan lead. Still waiting to see which team is gonna really come up on defense and make some stops. Yep. It's not really been a third quarter full of defense. It is McKenna Kelly the far side for McKenna Kelly. Through the Mac logo, middle lane drive, gets it to go. It can happen just like that. She's starting to really find a rhythm now. We were just talking about how she's struggling. Now she's looking like she's been doing this for a long time. Dickerson, top of the key. Bree Paulson, far side Dickerson. Launches a three far away. It takes a bounce off the rim, no good. Kayla Kelly on the line on the far side for Central. Left elbow, shuffles her way far away. Bird, three pointer, gets it to go. She had plenty of time on the shot clock, but Gabrielle Bird decided to just fire it off to give the Chips a 56 50 lead, their largest lead of the game. And Gabrielle Bird is 17. She's four for five from outside the arc. Dickerson, right elbow pull up, gets it to go. It's a four point contest now. And despite, you know, Kleesner and Hoff having great games, you're going to need Dickerson and Scott to step up here and really get your team some points. Kayla Kelly, right arm dribble, near wing for Central Michigan. Down to 310 left here in the third. Top of the key, pass near wing for McKenna Kelly. And a three pointer from the corner, good by Kara Sinski. And Deanna Hendricks will call a timeout here as the Red Hawks have given up three straight offensive possessions by Central Michigan with three pointers. Yeah, it's been a tough time. They're not handling the rotations very well. They're letting a lot of shooters just get open off the look. They're paying a little too much attention, I would say, to Michaela Kelly right now. They need to just focus on stopping everybody and getting them off the three-point line. It's 3.03 left here in quarter number three, a 59-52 lead for the Chippewas. The Miami team that actually Josiah ranks last in the MAC defensively, allowing 71.2 points per game on the year. And on the other side, you got a Central Michigan team that scores 77 points per game. That's first in the MAC, so really a mismatch on paper when it comes down to it. But if you look at this point in the game right now, with just a seven point difference between the two Rex trying to hang with the Chippewas so far. Yeah, they're definitely hanging with them. They're playing, they've been playing very well on defense. You know, they're still giving up the points, but if you're giving up points, that means you need to continuously put points up. You can't have a drought here for these last three minutes. You need to make sure that you keep a pace. Stickerson over the timeline, middle of the floor, dribbles the right arm, shuffling across the arc to the right wing, outside the arc. Pass the near corner for Schmitz. Leaves a far wing, here is Scott, little drive in the middle of the lane, right-handed layup is short, off the rim. And Central Michigan fires it up, no good again. Came down off the near corner from Davis. Davis right elbow down the right edge of the floor. And a whistle here as she was fouled, trying to go for a right arm layup for the post. Miami's well, got to just settle down a little bit on defense here and make sure that this run that Central Michigan is on right now doesn't affect them too much going forward. So Davis will shoot two for Central Michigan. First one missed short. Davis 73.5% free throw shooter on the year. That's five on the night. 22 minutes in the game and makes the second one. So Nickerson over the timeline, far side for the Red Hawks. Dribbles left arm outside the arc, works her way to the paint, then steps back out. Scott, top of the key, far end Dickerson. Oh, wow, yeah. Got the ball with two hands, and Kleiser was brought down under the hoop. I really didn't see what happened there. Well, that time, Kelly, she's trying to get position on Kleiser, so it's not easy to give up a paint, because that's a mismatch on their side of the ball. So, but she backs into her too far, completely takes Kleiser out from below. Well, the 218 left here in the third, a 60-52 lead for Central Michigan, and Kleiser will have a pair at the line. The first one in and out. Ducks were pretty good from the free throw line the other day against Toledo, but today just eight for 12 from the stripe, and the second one is good from Kleiser. Yeah, they definitely want to make sure they're making as many of their free throws as they can. Those are free points. You, you got to have all of them going forward. Davis back the other way, far side for Michaela Kelly. Will watch off a three on Scott. Miss short, rebound right to the hands of McKenna Kelly. Left edge of the paint, dish back for Michaela Kelly. Near wing three pointer is good off the hands of Bird. And Gabrielle Bird really hot for three point land tonight. Yeah, she has been the X factor coming off that bench for them. When you talked about how she was the leading scorer, she's, she's shown why today. 
Five for six from outside the arc. Scott, pull up jumper from 10 feet away, far side, miss for the Red Hawks. Kayla Kelly back to the way, Central Michigan. Shovel pass far away, a little baseline drive, and it's good by Karasinski. Right handed layup, got it to go. 65 53, the Central Michigan lead. They're on a 15 3 run in the last three minutes, nine seconds. Lyman's got to settle down here. Scott, an offensive foul, driving down the right edge of the paint, knocking over McKenna Kelly. And Central Michigan will get it back with 123 to go here in the third. They are on a 5 0 run in the last 44 seconds, 8 for 9 in their last nine field goals. Miami's got to settle down right now. Focus on just getting one stop right now. You're not going to get this lead to get back all in one play. And 12 points is the largest lead of the day for the Chips. Davis top of the key, walks it back to her top court. Right elbow, and she was fouled trying to make a charge on the right edge of the paint. Pleasner will get her third foul of the day. And it's down to the baseline here where Michaela Kelly Will inbound on the far side for Central Michigan. Kelly, the floater to the far wing. Here's Byrne in the corner. Gave it off for Michaela Kelly. Left hand dribble down the right edge of the paint. Little floater up and under, and it's going on a baseline drive by Michaela Kelly. They, yeah, they just can't be stopped right now on offense. Everything they're putting up is going down. Nickerson, right arm drill to the back logo. Feeds it near a wing outside the arc. Off the three pointer is good. And that ends the scoreless drought for the Red Hawks in a 7-0 run by Central Michigan. 67-56, the Chippewa lead with 35 seconds left here in the third. They have needed every single point they've gotten from her today. Davis left hand to dribble top of the key. Shovels it far away from McKenna Kelly. Kelly lost it up in the air. We'll get it back. Hands it off far away for Davis. Now Michaela Kelly down the right edge of the paint. Dish far corner. Karasinski gets it to go for the three-pointer. Karasinski has 13 points on the night. Only averaging 0.3 points per game on the year. Dickerson tries a three far side. That's good. At the buzzer to win the third quarter. So that'll be a high note for the Red Hawks. But a third quarter completely dominated by Central Michigan, Josiah. And they, the Chippewas take a 70-59 lead into the fourth. Yeah, they just got into a rhythm and pretty much, it's like you said, everything they were putting up was going down. They were probably about nine for 10 on their last 10 shots there to end the quarter. Miami's just got to focus on settling down a little bit. Just make sure you focus on getting one stop at a time when you're going into the fourth quarter and then everything else should be fine from there. Chippewas outscoring the Red Hawks 20 or 37 to 26 rather in that third quarter as Miami heads to the fourth down by 11 trying to find a groove here against the conference leading Chippewas. We're back with the fourth in a moment. It's Miami basketball on Red Hawk Radio.
Fourth quarter about to start. 11 point lead for Central Michigan over Miami to begin the final 10 minutes. Patrick Escher, Josiah Collins back here on Red Hawk Radio. And Josiah, what do you do for Miami to try to climb your way back into this one? It's all one possession at a time. You knew Central Michigan was, was going to be a team that goes on a run here. You just have to withstand the early down 11, so that's not that many possessions. Really, if you think about it, you get five stops, you score five times, you're down by one right now. So just take it one possession at a time. You're, you'll be all right. Chippewa's largest lead in the game was 14 points. Back in that third quarter, it's now 11. Far side pass, Davis, three pointer. Missed it too hard, bustled the rebound under the hoop for Central, and it's handed off back for Dickerson over the timeline. Middle of the floor comes Abby Hoff. Back for Dickerson, top of the key, works her way around the arc to the far side. In is Kleisner with a left-handed shot off the glass and in. That's exactly how you do it. Gotta do it. Create a mismatch on your side of the ball. Get it to your best player. Let her do something with it. A nine-point lead for the Chips. Our side Davis dribbles left arm, top of the key for Central Michigan. And back to the left wing outside the arc. Michaela Kelly. Will work her way top of the key. Reverse direction. Fire off a of left wing three. It's no good. Took a bounce off the left edge of the iron. Scott the rebound. She's back the other way. Payne Scott right edge of the floor. Fires it off. The hand that time on a good block by Kyra Bustle, who came in to swat it out of midair. And Scott unable to get the shot. Still a good off. drive. Still yeah. a good drive, though, even though you got blocked. You know, you go inside, try and make a play happen. I'm coming here for Dickerson. Near corner, Kleiser, baseline drive, fires it off the glass. That's a mismatch all day long, my goodness. Seven point lead for Central, 8.45 to go in the fourth. Red Hawks in a 5 0 run the last minute, 16. Bustle to the near corner for Waters, walks it across the arc, far side feed, Michaela Kelly. Outside the arc, a three from Bird, gets it to go, and a foul. And is this a chance for a four point play? Looks that way. Wow. They say Hoff committed the foul. The first Miami foul of the quarter and Bird a chance for a four point play for Central Michigan. She makes the free throw. It's now an 11 point Chippewa lead. What a huge game for Bird today. Came in averaging 0.3 points per game on the year. She has 24 tonight. Laser a jumper from the right elbow gets it to go. She leads Miami now with 25. And a little press here from the Rock Central having trouble Miami's coming out of their own end. 22 on the shot clock. Can we get a whistle here? Central calls a timeout as Davis was trapped in front of the Miami bench come, trying to come across the timeline on that far side of the floor. And with 8.16 to go here in the fourth, a 74-65 lead for Central Michigan. And I believe we do have a media timeout here. Rux trailing by nine to the Chippewas with 8.16 left here in the fourth. Miami basketball on Red Hot Radio.
Patrick Etcher, Josiah Collins, back with you here on Red Hawk Radio. 816 left in the fourth, a 74-65 lead for Central Michigan. One of the things you like, Josiah, about Miami's start to the fourth quarter, they're bringing the press very early on to the quarter rather than waiting for later when times may be more dire. Yeah, 100% I agree with the decision to bring the press early. It puts them in a really tough position trying to get the ball up court. Central works it up the floor to the right wing. Here's Michaela Kelly, feeds it near wing for Maddie. Waters, the three is good. And the three-point ball continues to work for Central Michigan in the game. They are shooting 50% as a team from outside the arc. 15 threes, that's a killer for them right now. Scott works her way to the arc and inside for a little jumper about 17 feet away for two, 10 point central lead. Davis on the timeline right away. 7.42 to go here in the fourth quarter and Central Michigan leading. Molly Davis today with six points. Top of the key, Michaela Kelly. Floats it down low in the paint. Kyra Bustle, a little shot left arm, went over the iron. Back to the way comes Dickerson for the Red Ox. Reaches the free throw line, feeds it far side. Schmitz will make a baseline oh, drive wait. and a double dribble. That's a bit of a weird call. She didn't even dribble the ball, but. <laughs> I guess the rest are saying that fumble earlier was her dribbling the ball. I don't really know. I'm not a ref kid. I mean, yeah, I can't explain that call for them, but. Waters to the middle of the floor. He had a foul whistle here as she passed it on the inbound to Davis, who got tripped up before the half court line. One thing when you're pressing, you have to make sure if they do end up breaking your press, you make sure you get back, find your matchups, and get in good defensive position. Because if you don't, then they're going to score every time. And about for Central Michigan over the timeline. Bustle the catch. Hands it down to the far wing. Davis feeds in your side for Waters. And we're going to whistle here for an off. Is that a blocking foul? Yeah, they're going to call a block there that time. Another one I, I can't really explain. I'm not a ref that time. But it looked like Scott just drove her to the baseline, got bumped a little bit, then called a block off of it. Fans don't like the call here, Millette. Waters, top of the key is Burt. Hands back for Kelly. Far side Waters to the middle of the paint. And nice play, Kyra Bustle. Right hander off the glass and in for two. It's gonna be really tough here. Miami's gotta string some stops together on defensive end. 6.50 left here in the fourth. 79-67 lead for Central Michigan. That's brand near side, top of the key. Dickerson, a three pointer is good. Offense hasn't gone away, it's the defense now. You just gotta get some stops. Bustle over the timeline right away. Fast break for Central. Kayla Kelly outside the arc, far away, gets it to go and a three pointer. This communication there led to Kelly just walking back to the corner with nobody guarding her. Wide open three. 6.20 to go in the fourth, a 12 point Central lead, 82 to 70. Dickerson far side, jumper by Kleesner is good. Kleesner for two. Savannah Kleesner adding two to the total that time. Launching it. Central Michigan stretch pass to the other end of the floor, trying to go offensive. And that time from under their own basket, but Kleiser was first to it. Works it to Dickerson, right wing outside the arc for a three, the best. Back to the hands and offensive rebound to Schmitz. And then top of the key, Kleiser missed a three. Back the other way comes Michaela Kelly. Over the timeline on the right side. Left-handed dribble at the top of the key. Left elbow drive. Please, their nice block away off the backboard. Here comes Dickerson, top of the key. Feeds it far away. Baseline drive from the far side. A foul committed there. Kenzie Schmitz will draw the call as it will be Bustle's first foul against Central Michigan. Just contact on the baseline drive from the far side will send Kenzie Schmitz to the line for two. Miami well, probably wants to cut this lead down to about six if, if they came down with about four minutes to go in the game. Once you get past that, if you're still trailing by 10, it's going to be a lot harder to come back. Free throw is good. That time by Kenzie Schmitz with 5.34 to go here in the fourth. 82-73 lead for Central. Here the central bench yelling, box out. And Schmitz makes the second. Waters feeds it far away for Davis. Back for Waters, middle of the floor for Central Michigan over the timeline on the left wing. Waters feeds it near side, three-pointer Bird. Missed it too hard. Coming down with a rebound, the Redhawks grab it under their own hoop. Dickerson 
Finally got lucky that time. You absolutely cannot leave Bird right now with the way that she's been shooting the ball. To McLaughlin in the paint. Her jumper's good from just beyond the back logo. Kelly McLaughlin on the board tonight. Making her first appearance in the game. Central over the timeline. Watch the back line. Waters, far side, Michaela Kelly thought about a three and a blocking foul here. As Scott goes down. And the fans are not pleased with the call as Michaela Kelly. That time they're probably looking at the elbow that Kelly gave Scott there on the way to the drive, but Russ are going to call the block there, but Scott was still moving. Yeah, kind of a sidestep that time, kind of caught her on the side. And it will be an inbound here for Central on the far side. Miami's in a good position though right now. They're down six already, five minutes to go. Just get a few more stops. See you right there. Waters to Kelly, far wing for Bird. Back for Michaela Kelly, three-pointer right wing. Took a bounce, no good. Rebound right to her. How did she get under the hoop? I have no idea. That was just too oh much. Goodness. No box out there on the other side. She shot it from outside the arc and came down to get her own rebound under the hoop. Here's Davis all the way down the middle of the lane. Drive, a shot no good. Rebound to S. Brandon. A foul was against Central Michigan as McKenna Kelly came in with contact there. 4.38 to go in the fourth and 82-76 lead for the Chips. Every position critical here. You, you want to score every single time you have the ball. Now you don't know how many possessions you're going to have left. Dickerson will head over the timeline, middle of the floor for the Red Hawks with a left-handed dribble. Top of the key is Dickerson to the right elbow. Down the near wing, we get a foul whistle in the air. And it's contact that time with McKenna Kelly. An 82-76 lead for the Chips, 4.25 to go in the fourth. Inbound coming near side of the baseline. Dickerson for McLaughlin. Back for Dickerson near wing. Finds McLaughlin far side. Feeds it to the paint. It was picked up by Waters. Yeah, cross court pass, not the one that you really want on that type of possession. Kayla Kelly central back in the offensive end of the floor. They go to the top of the key for Davis. Who waits here as we reach four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Davis, left arm dribble for Central Michigan between the legs. Shuffles her way across the near wing for Kelly. And we're going to whistle here for a foul. As Michaela Kelly had the ball near corner outside the arc, the pass into McKenna Kelly. And Kelly McLaughlin will pick up her first. With the contact that time. So at the line is McKenna Kelly for Central Michigan. And she will have two free throws as the first one is good. Five team fouls for Miami, three for Central Michigan, so it's a bonus for the Chippewas. Two free throws for every foul, and McKenna Kelly makes the second one. She's only a 40% free throw shooter on the year, so the lead now 84-76 for Central Michigan. Central's getting a lot of production for people that haven't really had that type of production all season. Dickerson top of the key for off. S. Brand down the wing. We'll play it over the iron. No good. Central corrals the rebound. Back to the near wing. Michaela Kelly. Fast break the other way. Down the left edge. Feeds it far side for McKenna Kelly. Back to the near wing for Davis. Outside the arc. She'll hold here. Central will just eat time off the clock instead of going for that fast break point. Davis, right wing outside the arc, spins around back to the top of the key. One bounce in the hands of Michaela Kelly. Walks it back outside of the free throw line with one to shoot. Right handed hook shot missed. Rebound to the hands of Schmitz. Dickerson over the line, left wing with a left handed dribble. We'll go for a left wing drive. One bounce and it's into the right side of the post for Hoff. Good look there and it's off the glass and in for two from Abby Hoff. Well, you gotta stay on the ground there on the press. You cannot jump when you see a pass coming. Water sidestep Schmitz in for the Miami bench. And Waters with the ball here with 20 to shoot, 245 left in the fourth, 84-78 central lead. McKenna Kelly down the right edge of the paint, it's off the glass and in for two. And back for Dickerson here, it dribbles right arm over the timeline of the far wing. Warren Dickerson to the top of the key, a three-pointer, missed too hard, tipped out of bounds by Schmitz. Actually, they regained control of it, Michaela Kelly getting there just in time. And an 86-78 lead for Central. Kelly the right arm dribble at half court with 15 to shoot. Got to put more pressure on her here, I think. Yeah, Schmitz is about three feet away from her. 
close the gap just a little bit as Michaela Kelly down to five to shoot. Right wing outside the arc, pass to the near wing for Purr, launches a three, it's short, rebound picked up immediately by Esperant, feeds Dickerson on the line right wing. Dickerson near side, Schmidt sidesteps the defender, three pointer too hard, and it's in the hands here of McKenna Kelly. And it's up on the far wing for Davis, left hand a dribble over the line on the far side. You got to get up on the on the players right now. You can't let them just burn time off the clock. You have to make them act. You have to make them do something. And a whistle here for a foul committed by Hoff. This was kind of near half court on that far wing, and free throws coming here for Molly Davis. Number fourteen. It's one for two at the line tonight. First one from Davis is good. Central Michigan as a team, one for seven in their last seven field goals, so struggling a bit on offense. Not seen to take advantage of that, but they themselves are one for four in their last four field goals. Yeah, they've had their chances here. That one for four is definitely going to prove to be a killer there. Second free throw made by Davis. It's a 10-point game with 90 seconds left. Cleaser, Mack will go paint. It's off the glass and in for two. Back the other way, Central Michigan comes right-handed dribble by Davis. Shovels it over the timeline of Michaela Kelly on the far away. Kelly right-handed dribble between the legs with 108 left. And now Miami will start to foul as she was just holding it there outside. The arc Scott came forward to put some contact on. And now with 109 to go in the fourth and eight-point lead for Central Michigan, Michaela Kelly has a shot here to make it a 10-point game again. I think there was some miscommunication there about what they were supposed to do on defense. It's like Scott was calling over to Lauren Dickerson to come over for a trap, but no, nobody ever came. So at top of the key is Michaela Kelly for Central Michigan. And she makes the first free throw. She's at the free throw line, by the way. Right hand a dribble and it's good for the second one. 105 left in the fourth, 10 point Central Michigan lead. Dickerson, right hand a dribble, down low for Kleesner, left edge of the paint, left handed hook shot missed. Comes down with a ball, works her way forward in front of the post. And a whistle here as Kleesner trying to put it up to the left hand, and shot was short. The iron, and we get a whistle here for a foul. Shooting two for Miami will be number 32, Savannah Kleesner. And Kleesner will shoot a pair here for the Red Hots. First one missed short. 70% free throw shooter is Kleesner. As we get another one short that time, it's controlled here by Miami off the rebound, and maybe another foul on Central here as Kenzie Schmitz grabbed it. And they will say Central Michigan did commit their 15th foul here. It was on Gabrielle Perth for her third personal foul, just contact on the far side with Schmitz. Hustle will come in here for Central Michigan. She'll take out Gabrielle Bird, who leads the Chippewas in points with 24. She was six for nine for three point range today. She has been the difference. You also got to wonder, might hit some more of these free throws, what kind of position they're in right now. I know. At the line, 11 for 18 now. Second one is good off the hands of Schmitz. And we're going to whistle here. I think Central Michigan just called a timeout. So they have one more left. Rucks have two left and a 90 81 lead for the Chips with 55.7 seconds to go here in the fourth. Yeah, no, when you look at the score, it's not impossible. This is technically a three-possession game. If you end up drawing up something that you can get three threes on for your next few possessions, but that also means that you're requiring either turnovers or you're having them miss free throws. So that's going to be a very difficult task for them to pull off at this stage of the game. Rex has a team 7 for 20 from outside the arc tonight. As the all-time series between these two teams is tied at 32 apiece. So the winner today will take the lead in the all-time series. But Central Michigan 8-2 and two in the last 10 meetings. Chips lead up by 9 with 55.7 seconds left. Far wing waters will inbound offensive end of the floor for Central. It's 
for Davis on the right wing, immediately touched by Dickerson for a foul. Fouls on number 13, Gordon Dickerson. Her fourth. So it'll be Dickerson's fourth with 54.4 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. And Kelly, McKenna Kelly, will come in to replace Bird, who they brought back in again. First free throw good by Molly Davis. It was now four for five from the line today. Dickerson has four personal fouls for the Red Ox. Peyton Scott has fouled out with five. And Davis second free throw is good. We get a timeout whistle here by the Red Ox. In a 92-81 game, Central Michigan on top, and Deanna Hendricks will use her third timeout. So both teams have one remaining. Gonna have to act fast here out of the timeout. Don't want to take too much time off the clock. Get an easy basket if you can. See what happens. I believe this is a full timeout. So the leading score for the Rock, Savannah Kleisner, who has 29 points, came into the game leading the team with 14.3 per game this season. These are 12 for 19 for the field today. Six rebounds tied for the team lead. Please are involved. They, they had a great game for Miami. They really stepped up with their scoring. You just needed some more from other people. Central Michigan, they got a lot of their role players to step up today, and that's really been the difference. Yeah, two blocks of the day for Savannah Kleiser as well. The leading point getter, of course, for Central Michigan. Gabrielle Bird, who has 24, six for nine from outside the arc, leading the team with two blocks. And Michaela Kelly, who we talked about, maybe had a slow start to the game, still with 22 points of the day, eight for 17 from the field. She was yeah. still a big part of what happened out oh, there. Definitely a big part of what happened. That third quarter run was really engineered by her. She was able to get the team out in space, able to do her thing in space. Really just got that got them up to this lead, and that has been their game ever since. So it'll be a Miami inbound far side of the floor in front of their own bench. Abby Hoff to our right. We'll toss it in to Kleesner, left elbow. Near wing pull it for Dickerson, a three-pointer too hard. They fight for the rebound under the hoop. Rocks will commit a foul as they went after it. Maddie Waters is down there trying to go, and I think Abby Hoff will pick up her third personal. So as you heard there, two free throws are on the way for Central Michigan. They will send to the line Maddie Waters. 83.3% free throw shooter on the year will miss the first one in and out. Two dribbles for Waters, fires up the spiraling free throw and gets it to go on the second one and make it a 93-81 lead for Central. 45 seconds left. Dickerson down low, Kleesner off the glass, right arm, no good, picks up the rebound, we get a foul whistle there. Definitely been a good fight by Miami, even though they're down, they're, just, they're not giving up yet. I'm not quite sure who they call the foul on, but it is on Central as Kleiser will line up for free throws here. Kyra Bustle will grab her fourth personal for Central. As they take McKenna Kelly out of the game, Kleiser's first free throw is good, and so now she has 30 on the night. Kleiser and Abby Hoff are the only Miami players in double figures, along with Warren Dickerson, who has 16. And Kleiser will sink the second free throw. Central Michigan will use their final timeout with 39 and a half seconds left in the fourth and a 93-83 lead for the Chippewas. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough one to close this one out, but if you're in Miami, there's definitely a lot of positives to take away from this game. Your defense got away from you in the third quarter up until that point. It was holding up. Their defense is doing a good job. It contained Michaela Kelly. It contained a lot of their other shooters, too. But then that third quarter run really just turned the tide of everything, and they just couldn't come back from that. Yep. So the Rocks' next game will be Wednesday. They'll play at Northern Illinois. A trip to DeKalb. It'll be a 7 o'clock Eastern time start for the Red Hawks there. And then back home next Saturday against Ohio. It'll be a triple header of sports on Red Hawk Radio next Saturday. A double header of basketball. Miami women will play Saturday at 1 o'clock against the Bobcats. The men will play at 3.30 Saturday here in Blood Hall against Northern Illinois. Both games on Red Hawk Radio. And then the hockey team hosts Western Michigan next week. And that'll be our next sports broadcast coming your way Friday night from Goggin. As the Miami hockey team back at home after a week off this weekend. They'll play the Broncos. It's going to be a busy day for you. Huh? It's going to be a busy day for you. Oh, yeah. 
We have four games in two days next weekend. We're looking forward to it. And then for Central Michigan, they'll play at home Saturday. Next Saturday against Bowling Green, a 1 o'clock start from McCurk Arena in Mount Pleasant. So they have an entire week off after this one to kind of recover. Waters inside of the far corner for Michaela Kelly and a foul immediately whistle. The foul coming in by number 23, Kenzie Schmitz, her fourth. Kenzie Schmitz will pick up her fourth. For Kenneth Kelly and for Gabrielle Berger. Bonus the line. Bonus, one. And shooting the bonus is Michaela Kelly here. We'll have two free throws at the line for Central. First one is good. With 38.6 seconds left here in the fourth. A 94-83 lead for the Chippewas. Michaela Kelly's second free throw is good. And Hoff, one bounce and it's in here to Dickerson. Picks it up after the ball went over the timeline, reaches three-point range to fire off a left-wing shot that missed. And a foul here under the hoop as Central grabbed the rebound, Maddie Waters. Red Hawks might feel a little disappointed about this one right now, but it was a good game against one of the top teams in the, in the back. You could possibly see this team again in the tournament, so just keep your mind on that, get ready for the next game. It was definitely gonna be a tough game today against an opposition that leads the conference as Waters makes the second one, or the first one rather, she'll have the second one coming up. And we'll sink the second one, a 97-83 lead for the Chippewas. Bucks had an 18-12 lead after the first quarter, but Central Michigan just turned on the Jets after that. We really didn't see the full potential of this team early on in the game. Yeah, that third quarter was still the difference. Game was even up until that point, and then things just got out of hand. He's in her left wing post. Team was fired off the glass in for two after a feed from outside the arc. But another foul whistled on the rebound and Central Michigan will come down the floor here for more free throws. It'll come off the hands of Maddie Waters. Eighty-three point three percent free throw shooter on the year is Waters. Makes the first free throw and we'll have one more remaining. The second one is good as well. 23.9 seconds left. The shot clock is off. Dickerson top of the key. Shuffles her way around the arc in the left wing. Far side. Three-pointer over the iron. And caught by Kleiser on the other side. It came off the hands of Schmitz. And Kleiser, the catch, and fired it off the glass and in for two. And the ball out of bounds at the far corner after that. 9.4 left. Yeah, Rex. We'll get it back as Central kind of coughed it up on the inbound play. Schmitz, top of the key for Dickerson. Floater pass to the paint for Kleesner, picked off by Molly Davis. And that'll do it for us from the Let Hall today. 99-87, your final score. The Central Michigan Chippewas over the Miami Red Hawks. Miami team that had a very great start to the game, held a lead for the majority of the first half, but something changed inside in the middle of that game. What do you think it was from Central Michigan who gets the victory today? Defense just couldn't hold up. We saw that third quarter run. That's what that's where the Miami lost the game today. Was that third quarter run? It was engineered by Michaela Kelly. She, it's just so hard to keep a player like that down for an entire game. Miami couldn't end up doing it, so she ended up getting not herself going, but also her teammates too. So it was just a tough time. Yeah. So the Red Hawks. Ball to 11 and 12 overall. They are now four and seven in the back for Central Michigan. Their winning streak improves to 11 games. They are 11 and 0 in the conference. They are 18 and four overall. And will head back home for a game next Saturday against Bowling Green at McGurk Arena. So again, our next sports broadcast comes your way Friday night, Miami Hockey in Western Michigan. Doug and Ice Center, that's our next time here on Red Hawk Radio. Miami Mewins basketball team in action again Wednesday at Northern Illinois at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So for Josiah Collins, rest of our great Red Hawk radio crew, this is Patrick Eschen saying so long and good afternoon from Millette Hall in Oxford. 99-87, your final here from Millette. Central Michigan, the win over Miami. This has been a presentation of Miami basketball on Red Hawk Radio.